In the world of language teaching, there are people who simply teach languages. And then there are others who go beyond that into something else, into real learning. And today I have the pleasure of speaking to one of those people, Mihalis Eleftherio, the creator of language transfer. Since 2011, he has been creating language courses in a vast array of different languages, including English, Arabic, Swahili, and Greek. And all of his courses are completely free. In this interview, we talk about free education and teaching philosophy and social activism and saving the planet. This is an edited version of our interview. If you would like to listen to the full version, you will find a link to the podcast below in the description box, where you will also find a link to the Language Transfer website, where you can find all of his free courses and also support his work with a donation. I really hope that you enjoy our interview. So, I am here with Mihalis from Language Transfer. So, let, let's sort of start at the beginning. When, when did you start Language Transfer? Um, I think around 2011, but then like really full time since 2014. There was like a okay. period where it was kind of blending with other activism experiments. And okay. Yeah. Okay. And did, did you, before you started Language Transfer, what did you do? Um, what was I doing? I was I was teaching languages to pay for my musical education. Okay, yeah. so you're a musician. <laughs> well, very briefly, yeah. I studied languages at, at university, and then and then I was uh, I was in Argentina. I was playing the violin, and uh, I was teaching I was teaching languages just to pay for all of that. And at the same time, I was doing activism, like okay. volunteer work okay. for NGOs and stuff. And somewhere in that journey, I kind of realised, oh, okay, actually. What I'm doing with the languages can be an activism if I make it free. Because yeah. I, like, I well, realised how much that had affected me in my life. Yeah. Well, I mean, I suppose this is this is sort of another important question: is why why did you decide to make everything free? I mean, you know, if you create a really good language course, you can you can make a lot of money. Like, yeah. Why would you do it free? Um, like, well, like I say, like, my motivation was always kind of doing something meaningful, which is why I was doing this NGO kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I realised that the thing that had most affected me was that experience of kind of reconstructing yourself in a new language and realising how much of yourself is uh, just a result of your language and maybe not chosen or oh, really? it, more simply how indoctrinated you are by your culture and your language and, and I thought that was just a, a kind of mind-blowing experience that I wanted to share and so I you like mean like be, if you so you mean like if, if people have another language then it's almost like they have another personality or yeah and uh, for one part but I think mostly it's a lot of like the concepts of you know where we come from it really depends on where you're coming from as a person you know it could be a national identity which is just you blow the lid off it looking at like how we dissect English for example in the bushes and realize what it's built out of or be it you know how your language shapes the way in which you think because in the thinking method we're dealing a lot with thought and like yeah. what thought we're transcribing into languages I mean there was just a lot of facets in there yeah. that, that made me think like oh actually you know this can be my activism or even just like having students that just thought they were stupid and that they were totally incapable of language learning or learning generally and then like you have a couple hours with them and like oh my god I can't believe like, <laughs> you know so it was kind of all of that together uh, that made me want to make it for free but well I think that's something that infuriates both of us right the idea that people try to learn a language and then they fail so many people fail almost almost instantly yeah and then they just feel well they feel stupid or they just miss out on the whole experience of learning a language yeah I mean there's yeah there's lots of different uh, motivations for that sense which is why I find this question kind of really hard because you know people say what is the motivation between language transfer it's like well there's lo there's lo of yeah. different motivations it depends like how I feel when I wake up in the morning and which one is like getting the cogs running today you know like for me a big part of it also is I hate the monetary system I hate that money takes decisions if you okay. think about it there's not really many a lot of like 
in logic or even individuals or philosophical ideas or ideas about how to design society or anything like that taking decisions it's just like what moves money around is what ends up happening yeah, yeah. that's a really artificial like decision making mechanism and, and the stupidity of that infuriates me I don't want to participate in it and that's a big reason as well also so it really seems like you have this sort of well I, I think the, the the whole idea of, of teaching language being like a type of activism like I've never that's not a concept that I'm familiar with like how how do you see teaching a language as, as activism I think changing people no changing people's minds making them think making them question things that they just take for granted it's got to be one, one of the most important things no that we, that we could do within activism for me it's just about like making people think also about uh, participating in society not uh, competitively yeah. I don't want to compete I want to collaborate like f for me for me that's something that, that that I would like to see change in the world of language learning is people you know coming out of their textbooks and actually just like using the language to do stuff like to collaborate with other people that's why people learn is it like I mean, I don't, uh, it is weird, I know what you mean, because a lot of the time it's like, oh, well, you know, I've had students where I used to give a lot of private classes before mm. and, and pay for language transfer through that. And then, you know, it, it was like, you, I always give classes with the idea that you're going to go out and use the language, that like I'm not going to be your only way that you're going to interact with Spanish or English or whatever. And it's like, well, if you're not doing that, yeah, why are you? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, why, why are you learning this language? Yeah, I, I think, like, I think for me, the fact that um, you know, we 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 took language, which is which is something a tool which was designed for communication between humans, and and then reduced it to for most people, I think their experience with learning languages at school. You know, for most people, you know, especially in in English-speaking countries in you know the UK and America. And even other countries, their experience is just sort of in the classroom with a book, answering multiple choice. They never actually um, use it to do anything outside of the classroom. Where I live in Spain, I think there's there's still that 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 sort of high respect for teachers. You know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. You, you know, so you know, I think there's still that that respect. But is it disappearing? I think I think I think Spanish people feel like it is. It yeah, is and I mean, you might have that respect, but mostly it's just because of authoritarianism. I don't think it's because, like, it's such a revered... Uh, I don't think people understand what the teacher does in it. And that's interesting if you talk about Spanish, because enseñar, mm. you know, it means to show and to teach. And that is a big problem. <laughs> you know, like, mammals learn by looking, right? So a cat watches... a kitten watches the cat, and it understands, you know, how to do certain stuff, right? It watches and it imitates, that's how we learn. So, like by extension, you know, when we start first, when we think about like teaching in a really layman's term, we think about like show me how to do, that. you know, show me. Mm -hmm. But you know, thousands of years have gone by. You know, we do need to realise that there is a very important difference between showing and teaching, and that isn't just a problem like of language in Spanish. It's like it's what happens in the UK when you go to school. Well, you get bored. It's like let me show you what you don't know. And it's like great. Are you gonna show me how to get that into my head? No, you're just literally showing me what I don't know, what I need to know. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah, it's so like um go home and smang, bang my head on the book until it's in there. Well it's just basically for me, I think a majority of education is just memorization and regurgitation. And that's rewarded. Yeah. You know, by good marks. Yeah. You know, people who are really good at regurgitating stuff get good marks. I yeah. mean how is that that's not learning? I learned that in my degree, like when I was thinking and put what I was thinking about, I'd get a low mark and then I was like all right go on then and I just like put actually I'll just put my own I can't believe I'm saying this on camera and then I just put my own thoughts anyway but then I'd go into Amazon and find a book in which they probably said that and cite the book and then I'd get a first <laughs> So yeah, there's there's not there's not any room That's to think crazy. because there's probably not the manpower at the university to deal with all of the students having these thoughts. Do you know what I mean? So it's like no no no, don't think yet. Just write down what someone else thought so and say that you know who thought it. And yeah, I mean it's ridiculous. I have a first on my degree and I don't uh, I don't value it. I'm not excited about it. I'm not. Do you know what I mean? It's, I don't. 
the university should be where their thought happens, but it's not, it's where their thought is sold. And there we go back to money again. If you look like, uh, you go into a university, what are the aims? It's about how, what is the turnover? What money is being made? That is that is the bottom line of everything. And now we've taken that, we think that's normal, it's a religion. We think that's so normal, that the money is the bottom line. That's what I mean when I say that money decides stuff. If you could summarize, like what change would you like to see in the future? in the world of sort of language teaching and language learning? Oh, just less involvement of money. I mean, that's it at the end of the day. And that, that's the same change I'd like to see in the world. I mean, the, the, the reason it's so bad is because it's so lucrative. That's why it's so bad. Because it's so, so the correlation? Lucrative. Of course. Like, if you think, like, you know, this exoticism that you offer on the cover of a language learning book, how exciting that is and that impulse buy, you know, and then the fact that people's expectations are so low because of also the education system and other publications they might want to look at. No one, I mean, no one's going to go back to the shop and say, I didn't learn from this book, it's crap, I want to return it, you know. So, mostly they focus on publicity, they focus on, uh, you know, the graphic design of their fun color. It is just so, so lucrative. That's why I don't think it's going to improve. Uh, Unless money, money, unless money is taken you know, out like of the most things in the world, money needs to stop taking decisions. Like we need to grow up and take decisions for ourselves, and, and stop, you know, looking to okay, what is going to move more money around? That's what I should do. Like I, it infuriates me the stupidity behind it, you know, and just how common ground it is, and how it forms like the staple, the cornerstone of all of our lives. And then when you start questioning it, your whole world falls apart. And it's a bit painful, and it was for me, but you know. It yeah. happened. <laughs> well, look, I, I think, you know, um, like, I, I'm meeting with you today. I'm, I'm meeting with, with, with other, like, companies and individuals who are doing free education. And, you know, I think, um, I, I know that it's really, what could we say, really kitsch and twee and, and, and a total cliche. But um, I think it was Nelson Mandela, he said, be the change that you want to see in the world. So, what I, you know, I think it's really sort of that simple. Like, I try to be less angry than me, though. <laughs> like, if you want, to, if you want free education, then then offer it. Like, yeah. if you want to you see, want, if you want the society to stop behaving stupidly, say, I'm not going to participate in that stupidity. I think it's stupid. I'm not participating. Yeah. Or like, if there's teachers out there, you know, if there's teachers out there who, who, who just, as you say, they go to work to get their paycheck and that's it, then do something you know, else. Do something else. Or. <laughs> Or be an anarchist, or, right? or get excited about teaching. Because I mean, I don't. I would never have imagined I would have been this excited about teaching. I was teaching to pay for my musical education, like I said at the beginning. When I realised that I can have really terrible, boring classes, frustrating classes, or I can change someone's life in my class and have them crying because I can't believe that they've learned something. Do you know what I mean? It was like, well, obviously, you know, whatever you do in life, like we put an effort, make you know, to do it well. And there's too many Passion. teachers that are just fighting their way through the day and I understand it especially in public uh, or public education in English I don't know if it means the same thing like state education yeah yeah, yeah. you know that are really thinly strung and you know they have a hard time getting through the day but with all things in life the more energy you put in the more you're gonna get from it you know I was a terribly behaved kid at school absolutely horrific and I would always behave for my teachers that engaged me. Uh, it was okay. the ones that didn't engage me, but I was like setting the classroom on fire <laughs> and stuff like that. I believe that everybody has something that they're really interested in. It might, it might be, you know, maybe not, not going to change the world, but at least in that thing, you know, you're. I don't know. I mean, no one changes the world. You change your world, and you have an impact on other people's worlds. You know, and yeah. like this is an organism. I'm one cell. I used to feel like this kind of, especially with the other activism, like oh, we've got to change the world and stuff. And uh, I, luckily, I've look, let go of that because it did give me a lot of anxiety. You know, because it is, it's unnatural. There is an organism. We are, we are cells. You know, like I have a job as a cell. You have a job as a cell. Try to be truth to your, truthful to yourself. You know, and that's it. At the end of the day, all of this is going to be sucked into the sun by the end of it anyway. No one's going to have any idea who we were or what we were about. Hopefully, that's hopefully because the other, the other case is that we bring plastic to Mars, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Mihailis, you're you're a very deep and fascinating person. <laughs> Cheers. And um, I really wish you the best of luck with language transfer. I Thank hope you. that everybody here 
checks it out if you want to learn any out. of these languages uh, Spanish, Arabic, Turkish, Greek, French, Swahili, German, or Italian, and more on the way. Yeah, Mandarin is on the way. Oh my god. Apparently. <laughs> oh my god. Um, thank you, Mahalas. Thank, thank you. Thank you on behalf of, of the planet. <laughs>